We're going to start. We're going to start on part two of Мы Aliyah and the Bible. Начнем второй раздел темы Aliyah и Библия. We're going to look at scattering and regathering. Мы рассмотрим рассеяние и воссоединение, собрание снова. So we'll рассеяние see... и возвращение. We'll see how far we get along in our message. We've had a lot of good discussion. And that's a good thing. So I welcome questions as we go. But let's see what the Lord has for us for this session. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have together. We continue to look into your word. We continue to ask you for revelation, for understanding, Lord, that we can work with you and pray your purposes to come on earth just as they are in heaven. So we commit this time to you in Yeshua's name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, scattering and regathering. Okay. So, we're going to look at a timeline. So, about 1900 was the covenant with Abraham. 1445 was the deliverance from Egypt. 1445 год до нашей эры избавления из Египта. And the covenant that God made through Moses. И завет с Моисеем через Моисея. 1405. Joshua enters the promised land. Год до нашей эры Иисус входит в обетованную землю. That was after 40 years in the wilderness. Это после 400 лет в 40 лет в пустыне. And Israel begins to possess the land. Израиль начинает владевать землей. Okay, 930. The kingdom splits. There's the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. We're doing just hitting the, some of the main highlights. In 722, the northern kingdom of Israel is taken into exile in Assyria. Then in 586, the southern kingdom of Judah is taken in exile to Babylonia. In Babylon. 516 is the end of the 70 year exile. In Babylon. And at that time, some of the Israelites returned to Judah. We don't have record of the northern tribes ever returning to the northern kingdom. And at that time, 516, the temple they begin the, the rebuilding of the temple. This is called the second temple. Solomon's temple was destroyed. And now Ezra and Nehemiah begin the rebuilding of the temple. This is the same temple that later Herod uh, makes much larger and more magnificent. But that's the temple is called the second temple. It was begun. It was begun by Ezra and Nehemiah, but expanded by Herod. Then in 70 A.D. There, the destruction of the second temple by Rome. And many Jews are exiled by Rome. And then there is another Jewish revolt at the time of 135 AD. This was led by a revolt led by Bar Kokhba. 
And the revolt was unsuccessful. И потерпели поражение они And в этом бунте. Rome was at this point had enough with these Jews. К этому времени римляне уже были сыты евреями. They expelled all the Jews from Jerusalem. Изгнали всех евреев из Иерусалима. And turned it into a pagan city. Превратили его в языческий город. And this is the start of the diaspora. И с этого времени начало диаспоры. The Jews being scattered all over the earth. Евреи рассеяны по всей земле. Okay, you're still copying. Think some. Oh yeah, go back. Some people I think are still writing. Yeah. Okay. So as they're writing, we'll just continue a little. We're going to look at God's warning to Israel. Мы посмотрим на предупреждение Бога Израилю. How he called them to be a people set apart. Как он призывал их быть народом отделенным. And he Uh, laid before him the ways of life and death. И он предложил им пути жизни или же пути смерти. And said that they could choose. И сказал, что они могут выбрать. When you're finished. For those who are copying, we're going to look at Exodus 19. И затем мы откроем Исход 19 главу. Verses 4 to 6. Исход 19, 4-6. Okay, I'm going to be begin reading. Uh, actually, I'm going to start in verse three. Then Moses went up to God. He made Aliyah. It's the same word. He went up to God. All through Scripture, it's a picture of being restored to God. Moses, Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, what you are to tell the people of Israel. Verse 4. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, how I carried you on eagles' wings. Вы видели, что я сделал египтянам, как носил вас, как на орлиных крыльях. And I brought you to myself. И принес вас к себе. Now, if you obey me fully, итак, если будете слушаться гласа моего, and keep my covenant, и соблюдать завет мой, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. То будете моим уделом из всех народов. Here is the call of God for the nation to come to him. Remember in Genesis 12 he called one man. He called Abraham to come out. And that, that made a separation from the world. And it made, it made an animosity. It made, um, and now he's calling a nation to To come out. А в этом варианте он призывает народ выйти, прийти. He says, although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Ибо моя земля, а вы будете у меня царственным царством священником, священников и народом святым. This is the call that God has on Israel. Это такое призвание у Бога для Израиля. And it remains to this day которая остается до сегодняшнего дня. И они должны быть народом, принявшим Иешуа Мессию. И этого еще не случилось как с народом. Ну, как с народом. Но идет день, когда еврейские лидеры скажут Баруха Баба Шема Данай. И это принесет восстановление миру. So he said to Moses, these are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Just the last of the verse. 
Okay, next. <coughs> вот слова, которые ты скажешь сынам Израилевым. Okay, as God's chosen people, the Lord required the Israelites to walk in his ways or else they would be cast out of the land. И как от избранного народа Господь требует от израильтян ходить его путями, иначе они будут изгнаны из земли. We see in Leviticus 18. Левитам 18 главе. 26-28. Стихи 26-28. He said, but you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the aliens living among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you. And the land became defiled. Remember, this is God's chosen land. Помните, это Божья избранная земля. His promised land. Обетованная земля. Verse 28. And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. И вас не свергнула себя земля, когда вы станете осквернять ее, как она свергнула народы, бывшие прежде вас. You'll remember that we said the Abrahamic covenant was unconditional. Помните, Завет Авраамов безусловен. Well, this one is very conditional. А этот очень условен. To walk in the blessings, they must walk in obedience. Для того, чтобы жить в благословении, они должны быть послушаны. And he says many times that if they disobey, they will be cast out of the land. Часто, если он говорит, если не послушаетесь, то свергнет себя земля вас. Leviticus 20, verse 22. Левитам 20, 21. Okay, next. He repeats again, keep all my decrees and laws and follow them. So that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. He's speaking very strongly to Israel. Сильно он говорит это Израилю. Telling them the consequences that will come. И говорит, какие последствия придут. If they disobey. Если они не ослушаются. Deuteronomy 28. We'll turn there. Второзаконие 28. And next slide. Oh, here it is. Okay. <coughs> Deuteronomy 28. We mentioned already that this, this is the chapter of the blessings and curses. Глава описания благословений и проклятий. Об этом мы уже говорили. Verse, verse 1 through 14, God says the blessings for obedience. And verses 15 through 68 are the curses. He spends a lot more time on the curses. Because the Lord knew what was going to happen. And he makes it very clear what will happen if they disobey. God is a good parent. There are, there are some times that as a parent we'll leave home and we'll put some of the other children in charge of the younger ones. And we will often sit down with the young ones and we'll be very clear with them. There will be punishments for disobedience. And we're very clear that they, we make sure they understand exactly what's expected of them. And make sure they understand what the consequences will be if they disobey. Последствия, если не послушаются. God is a good God. Бог, Бог благой. And he was very clear with the Israelites what would happen when they disobeyed. Так же самое он очень ясно объяснил израильтянам, что будет, если они не послушаются. Because he's so clear, и поскольку он такой, many times we see of the Israelites start to read the word of God again. Такой детальный, такой все детально. For example, the, the King Josiah. И по этой причине часто люди, вот как царь Иосия, начинают перечитывать его слова снова и снова. Judah was not following the word of the Lord. То, что Иуда не следовал слову Господнему. And he rediscovered the law, the Torah. 
И they found it. They literally found it. It was hidden in the wall. Господа, and he began reading it. And he said, this is why we have so many problems. We're not obeying the word of God. So because it's recorded so clearly throughout the history of the Jews whenever we begin to read the word again we understand why we have so many problems. So the curses are, are listed here in Deuteronomy 28. And it seems like they get worse and worse for disobedience as you read through it. И когда будете читать, такое ощущение, что проклятие хуже последующее, хуже предыдущего. There's a progression in their punishments. Или же прогрессия в наказании. Тяжелее и тяжелее наказание. It's interesting if you, as we look at verse 58. Интересно в 58 стихе that the, the, the ultimate punishment for forsaking the Lord is that they will be sent out of the land. That they'll be, they'll be scattered among the nations. That's even worse than all these other punishments it speaks of. That it almost doesn't make sense. Because he talks about plagues. And famine, and suffering, starvation, death, suffering, starvation. But he said the worst is when Israel is out, out of the land. That only makes sense if we understand the importance of the Jews being in the land. For God's end time purposes for his restoration of the entire earth the Jews must be in the land. Okay, verse 58. If you do not carefully follow all the words of this law which are written in this book and do not revere this glorious and awesome name the Lord your God it lists many terrible things and then verse 64 then the Lord will scatter you among all the nations from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship other gods, gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your fathers have known. Many times the, the Israelites wanted to be like all the nations. They wanted a king to be like all the nations. They wanted many times to be just like one of the nations. But, but God does not intend them to be like just one of the nations. They're supposed to be his special people. Set apart for him. Народом, отделенным для Него. Okay, let's advance. Okay. So, as we know, Israel did, in fact, turn away from the Lord. И мы знаем, что Израиль отвернулся от Господа. He sent them into exile in Babylon, as he said he would. Он изгнал их в Вавилон, как и сказал в своем слове. We're going to look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel. 36.17. 36 глава, стих 17. At this point, the Lord is speaking to Ezekiel. And they are in exile. And the Lord is explaining it to him. Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their conduct and their actions. So what God said the, the curses that he said would happen, they did happen. Okay, let's see, verse, verse 18. So I poured out my wrath on them because they had shed blood in the land and because they defiled it with their idols. Okay. 
I dispersed them among the nations and they were scattered through the countries. Их по народам, и они разве... по землям. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. Я судил их по путям их и по делам их. And wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name. For it was said of them, these are the Lord's people, and yet they had to leave his land. So here we see that the Jews being outside the land, it brings a reproach to the name of the Lord. Обеславливает еще имя Бога, упрек ему. Continuing in verse 21. The Lord said, I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they had gone. И пожалел я свое имя мое, которое обеславили дом, обеславил дом Израилев у народов, куда пришел. Because this is so against the purposes of God. Потому что это так противоречит целям Бога. For the Jews to be kicked out of the land, to be forced out of the land. It brings a reproach to the name of God. Let's turn to Lamentations 2.15. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15. Lamentations was spoken over the destruction of Jerusalem. Lamentations 2.15. Just after Jeremiah. Well, in English. Okay. All who pass your way clap their hands at you. Руками сплескивают о тебе все проходящие путем. They scoff and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Do you see that it brings reproach to the name of the Lord? God's purpose for Jerusalem is that they are the joy of the whole earth. And here it lies in ruins. And the Jews are in exile. It goes against everything that God has planned for his creation. Okay, back to Ezekiel 36. Continuing with verse 22. Ezekiel 36, 22. Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I'm going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you've gone. А ради святого имени моего, которое вы обеславили у народов, куда пошли. I will show the holiness of my great name. И освящу великое имя мое. Which you, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Обеславимое у народов. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord. И узнают народы, что я Господь. Declares the sovereign Lord. When I show myself holy through you before their eyes. He, God promises to bring Israel back to the promised land to show the nations his holiness. This is a declaration of God's holiness. And a declaration of his faithfulness to his purpose for Israel. And again, it's not just to bless Israel. It's to bless all the nations. He said, when I do this in Israel, all the nations around you will then know that I am the Lord. It is a declaration to the Muslim nations. 
It's a declaration to all nations. Для мусульманских стран, но и для других народов. That he is the Lord. Что он Господь. And he will accomplish his purposes. И что он завершит свои цели. Okay. His promise, his promise to regather Israel to the promised land is connected to the promise of the new covenant. Его обещание воссоединить Израиль в обетованной земле связано с обещанием Нового Завета. We continue in Ezekiel. Снова Иезекииля, книга. The Lord said, For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. Возьму вас из народов, соберу вас из всех стран и приведу вас в землю вашу. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Here he's referring to the new covenant. He said, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. Here he's connecting it, regathering Israel to the new covenant. Проводит взаимосвязь между воссоединением Израиля и Новым Заветом. Такой же язык он использует в обетовании Нового Завета в Иеремии 31 главе. Okay, Иеремия 31, 31. Okay. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Вот наступают дни, говорит Господь, когда я заключу с домом Израиля, домом Иуды новый завет. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Не такой завет, какой я заключил с отцами их в тот день, когда взял их за руку, чтобы вывести их из земли египетской. Because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. Мой, они нарушили, хотя я оставался в союзе с ними, говорит Господь. Завет, который я заключу с домом Израилевым после тех дней, говорит Господь. Вложу закон мой во внутренности их, на сердцах их, напишу его. Буду им Богом, они будут моим народом. Or a man his brother saying, "Know the Lord." И уже не будут учить друг друга брат брата говорить, познайте Господа. Because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. Ибо все сами будут знать меня от малого до большого, говорит Господь. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Я прощу беззакония их и грехов их уже не воспомяну более. So this is the promise of the new covenant. Поэтому это обещание нового завета. But notice the order that God says He will do it. И заметьте в порядок, в котором Он говорит это. First He says, "I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land." Сначала я вас соберу из всех стран и приведу вас в землю вашу. The first thing He says, first I will gather you to your land. Сначала соберу вас в вашей земле. Then he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. So this is God's order. First I'll bring the Jews to the land. Then I will put the new spirit within them. If we go too fast, let me know. You want to back, back up. Also, if we have any questions as we go, feel free to ask. So that was God's order. He said, first I will bring them to the land, then I will put my spirit within them. Okay. 
Okay, we ready? Okay, now some say that the return of the Jews to the land of Israel in our day is not caused by the hand of God. И некоторые говорят, что возвращение евреев в землю обетованную в наши дни никак не связано с рукой Божьей. Потому что те, кто возвращаются, не верят в Мессию. Некоторые в церкви не признают, что за этим стоит рука Бога. Потому что говорят, что они не верующие. Но... God said he would bring Israel back to the land and then give them a new heart. The new covenant. And this is what we're seeing today. The vast majority of the Jews who've returned to the land are not yet believers in, in Messiah, in Yeshua. Большая часть евреев, возвратившихся в Израиль и в землю, еще не являются верующими в Ишуа. In fact, the majority are not even religious Orthodox Jews. Большинство из них даже никакого отношения имеют к ортодоксальным евреям. Many are secular, agnostic Jews. Религиозные евреи, но многие из них агностики, мирские. They're responding to the Lord without even realizing it. Светские евреи, но они откликаются на призыв Господа, даже не осознавая этого. And it's time for believers to come alongside and to say, this is what the Lord is saying. It's time for believers to understand God's purposes. Okay. We are also beginning to see that more are coming into the new covenant today by receiving Yeshua as the Messiah. This is what we're seeing in Israel. Также в Израиле мы видим, что больше и больше приходят к принятию Ишуа наши дни. И растет единство среди общин. Они вместе объединяются ради евангелизма. Есть такой годичный... Фестиваль New Age, последователь New Age под названием Бумбанела. Бумбан. So this is, it's, 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 it's kind of ironic that they have this New Age festival. Иронично, что у них проходит этот фестиваль New Age. Because they have it during Pesach. Потому что они на Песах организуют этот фестиваль. Прямо сейчас. And there's, it's an annual, it's a three-day event and attracts, attracts over 30,000 Israelis during Pesach. Это три дня, фестиваль длится, около 30 тысяч израильтян туда съезжаются. People come to camp on a sandy beach between Ashdod and Ashkelon, which is south of Tel Aviv. Съезжаются, располагаются лагерем, это к югу от Тель-Авива. And they say the, the purpose is to have a place for meeting, experiencing, Crossing borders, transcending social limitations through music, creation, and connection with nature. Они говорят, цель этого фестиваля это встреча, переживание, пересечение границ, социальных барьеров через музыку, творение и воссоединение с природой. It's uh, it's pagan. Это язычество полное. New age. We can go to the next. New age. Here's a here's a photo. Вот фотография. So we took we would take groups to go and to share the gospel at these festivals. Мы группы собираем и Евангелие рассказываем там на фестивале. There's tents as far as you can see. И там все заполнено палатками. Israelis during they're they're off of school because of the Pesach break. Это на на Песах это каникулы уже на всех школах университетах. And they go to these places. There's loud music playing. Они туда приезжают, там музыка везде играет громко. There's all kinds of uh, sinful things happening. И много греха тоже происходит. And so we go and we share the gospel with them. И мы едем туда и рассказываем Евангелие. This is uh, this is actually in the believers' tent. В принципе, вот это вот такое покрытие, это палатка верующего. So believers from all different congregations will come together. И туда съезжаются верующие с разных церквей. And we'll have a place there. С разных общин. Invite people to come. Это место мы там свое забили и туда приглашаем людей, чтобы они туда тоже приходили. And this is 
that, that happens to be me sharing the gospel with these people. И это я там стоял. They're not believers. Рассказываю Евангелие неверующим. Most of them have probably never heard the gospel before. И большинство из них вообще, наверное, никогда Евангелие не слышали раньше. So it's a wonderful chance to reach out. Это замечательный шанс достижения людей. I mentioned from my testimony that I used to be into New Age. И как своем своего свидетельства я тоже принимал участие в New Age. And these people are very open. И эти люди очень открытые. They're very hungry for spiritual things. Они жаждут духовного. I remember when I was into it, I would talk to anybody, anybody about anything. Я помню, когда я был в Нью-Йорке, я тоже с кем угодно, о чем угодно мог говорить. Они тоже похожи на меня. You can come and say, hey, I want to tell you that Yeshua is the Messiah. И я прихожу, говорю к ним, хотите рассказать, что Ишуа есть Мессия? О, я? О, да. Окей, tell me about it. Хорошо, расскажи мне об этом. And so we get a chance to share with them the gospel. У нас появляется шанс рассказывать им Евангелие. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here.